Good afternoon, friends. So welcome to my channel, Pediatric Classes. Today, we are going to discuss about the recent changes in the neonatal resuscitation program. That is eighth edition of it. It's uh, due in uh, June. That means this month, uh, 2021. Uh, till today, it has not released yet. Uh, so uh, this is a very important topic, uh, not only for uh, postgraduates or undergraduates, but also for practicing pediatricians. So let me go into the topic directly. So meanwhile, uh, don't forget to subscribe. And uh, if you like the video, don't forget to uh, share with your friends. As I say, you know, this is a very important uh, topic where we need, all need to uh, know. Okay. So, uh, so this is the chart which is given in the NRP 8th edition. Uh, if you can check in the net, it is available NRP 8th edition. So in that, uh, I, in this session, I'll be discussing the changes. These are the major six changes they are telling. I know the font size is less. So I'll be taking one by one in the subsequent slides. Okay. So first, first stage. So this are the six changes. And we'll be comparing the 7th edition and the NRP 8th edition. Okay. So what this is the first First stage. What is the first change? The umbilical cord management plan is added to the four pre-birth questions, replacing how many babies? Like I'll explain. In the seventh edition, we have got the question. The first was the four pre-birth questions included. What is gestational age? That is term or preterm. We asked. We asked the um, whether the amniotic fluid is clear or not. How many babies are there? And any additional risk factors? Here, what has happened is is how many babies that is replaced by what is the umbilical cord management plan? See how many babies, whether twins or uh, other in her triplets or whatever, that will come under the risk factors of multiple pregnancy. That is why precisely the NAPI 8th edition is telling that how many babies will be replaced by umbilical cord management plan. We need to know whether we are going to do delayed cord clamping. As you all know, delayed cord clamping uh, uh, is like we are delaying the cord clamping by around 30 to 60 seconds. WHO says 60 seconds, ACO just says around uh, 30 to 60 seconds. So this actually is supposed to be beneficial for both preterm babies and also for term babies. So we have to decide what is our umbilical cord management plan. We also need to find out whether we are planning to do any uh, sampling or the, or the cord uh, blood. Uh, we are going to get the stem cells from the cord blood. All these things we need to uh, discuss and finalize and be ready. Okay, so that is one change. So I hope you are clear here. So second change is here. Initial steps are reordered to reflect better uh, practices. So here, I'll just take what's Yeah, so the, here the initial steps are reordered to reflect vector common prices. That means, you know, the initial steps according to the NRP 7th edition is warm and maintain normal temperature. Okay, then position the airway, clear the secretions if needed, dry and stimulate. But what actually we do is for the practicality, what happens is we actually get the baby, put in the warmer, we drag the baby, stimulate if the baby is not right, position the airway and suction if required. Uh, so this is actually the initial steps are the same, but then it is reordered for to reflect the common uh, practice. Okay, so this is another second change. The third change is about the electronic cardiac monitor. So the electronic cardiac monitor is recommended earlier in the algorithm in NRP 7th. Okay, where do they say now in NRP 7th, what did they say is electronic cardiac monitor is preferred method for assessing heart rate during cardiac compression. So it comes in near cardiac compression only. Whereas in NRP 8, they say when an alternate airway becomes necessary, is that a cardiac monitor is recommended for the most accurate assessment of the baby's heart rate. So coming to the fourth change. That is about the dosage of epinephrine, intravenous and intraocious flush volume. Okay, so here there is uh, the fourth change is regarding the flush volume. As you know, when you give the epinephrine, you will be using a flush. Okay, so flush volume according to NRP 7 was 0.5 to 1 ml of normal saline. It has been found that this sub volume is insufficient. Uh, so in NRP 8, the recommendation is to use the flush volume to 3 ml of normal saline. This applies to all weights and gestational ages. I repeat, the flush volume is increased to 3 ml of normal saline. 
Coming to the fifth change, epinephrine, intravenous and intraosseous and intratracheal doses, the dosages, we all are like, they'll give you a range of the dosages always. Now, the change is these doses have been simplified for educational efficiency. The dosage range remains unchanged. The simplified intravenous, intraosseous, and intratracheal do not represent an endorsement of any particular dose within the recommended dosing range. And anyway, additional research is required here. So as you know, according to the NRP7, the dosages, Intravenous or intraosseous is 0.101 to 0.03 mg per kg, equivalent to 0.1 to 0.3 ml per kg of 1 in 10,000. The range of endotracheal dose is 0.05 to 0.1 ml per kg, which is equal to 0.5 to 1 ml per kg of again uh, endotracheal uh, when we are going to get adrenaline. This is a range. So, see what is this is when that time um, when we are uh, going to do when we are doing resuscitation, that range is if you are uh, to avoid the confusion. The NRP8 says the initial suggested IV dose, they have just made it as 0.02 MD, mg per kg. That means equivalent to 0.2 ml per kg of 1 in 10,000 adrenaline, okay? As you know, adrenaline is available in 1 in 1,000. We dilute it. Uh, we take 1 ml of it and add 9 ml of normal cell and make it 1 in 10,000. So you get a 1 in 10,000 adrenaline. So it is suppose it is a 3 kg baby. You just have to just put it in a bit 3 into 0.2. That is 0.6 ml uh, of in, uh, intravenous or intraosseous and uh, uh, intravenous or intraosseous adrenaline is required. So the endotracheal dose also has changed to 0.1 mg per kg or 1 ml per kg. So it becomes it is a 3 kg baby. We need to give around 3 ml per kg. But please note, uh, the, the range remains the same. So even if somebody is using 0.01 or even somebody is using 0.03, that is not wrong. The range remains unchanged. So this is for simplicity. They have just told that IV or intraosseous changed to 0.2 ml per kg and endotracheal it has been changed to 1 ml per kg. The dosing range remains the same. The sixth change is about the expanded time frame for the cessation of resuscitative efforts. So when do we stop the resuscitative efforts? The time frame has been expanded. According to NRP7, that is if there is a confirmed absence of heart rate after 10 minutes of resuscitation, it is reasonable to stop the resuscitative efforts. However, the decision to continue or discontinue should be individualized. But according to the NRP8, if confirmed absence of the cessation after all, all appropriate uh, steps are performed, consider cessation after 20 minutes. I repeat here, in an RP7, it was 10 minutes, whereas in an RP8, it is around 20 minutes after birth. The decision individualized on a patient and contextual factors. So these are the main six changes. So uh, if I um, if are remembering that, there are six changes. So I'll just summarize. One is uh, about the umbilical cord management. So we have to decide uh, that how many babies get replaced by the umbilical cord management in the first step, okay? And initial steps got reordered. And then what happened? So if you just see the previous slides, I'll just, this is the thing you have to remember properly. This is the slide. I'll just put it in further headings. So we have discussed about umbilical cord management. I've discussed about initial steps, which is reordered, and the usage of electronic cardiac monitor, which has come pre, uh, a bit earlier, whenever an alternate airway is considered. We are also told about the flash volume, please remember the flash volume is increased to 3 ml. And also the dosage range has been simplified. The range remains the same, but the doses have been simplified to IV or intraosseous as 0.2 ml per kg and in the tracheal as 1 ml per kg of adrenaline. Again, uh, please remember it is 1 in 10,000. Okay, the expanded time frame it has been increased. The initial NRP7 was only 10 minutes for cessation, whereas in NRP8, they say if confirmed absence of heart rate after all appropriate measures, we need to wait for till 20 minutes for the session. Decision. Anyway, they have about the decision. All these cases are individualized. Okay, so uh, these are the one, two, three, four, five, and six changes which we are discussed. So if you remember, this is the uh, uh, what is it called? The algorithm. I just uh, put the algorithm. It is a little uh, smaller font, so uh, we can just break it up, and I will just show you here like this. So first, now change and in counseling, team briefing, and equipment check. Then the birth happens. You ask um, the USS like uh, chom. Uh, the tone and breathing or crying. If I stay with the mother for initial steps, I, please remember your initial steps here has been reordered. Okay. And according to the NRP8, then we, uh, if the baby is not crying again, mom, dry stimulate. Uh, 
uh, and airway and suction if required. Again, the baby's apnea or gasping or heart rate less than 100, we need to consider positive pressure ventilation, pulse pressure, and this here, the cardiac monitor has come here. And if not, if you consider labor, breathing, or persistent cyanosis, yes, you have to go for positioning airway, suction, pulse oximeter, oxygen, consider a CPAP. So, and also send the baby for post resuscitation care and team briefing. But if the heart rate is less than 100 per beats per minute, what will you do? We have to ensure adequate ventilation. Consider ETT or laryngeal mass, or cardiac monitor. And despite doing all this, what happens if the heart rate is less than 60 beats per minute? Uh, yes, you have to consider ETT or laryngeal mass, chest compression, coordinate with uh, PP with UC. Here, remember, we are increasing the FIO2 oxygen to 100%. You know, they can, uh, this, uh, all these things have been uh, elaborately discussed in my previous video, and uh, neonatal resuscitation made easy. So that is based on NRP 7th, actually. But then every step, everything has been demonstrated. So if any uh, clarifications, okay, you can just go back to the video on neonatal resuscitation made easy. Okay. And here, what happens? So uh, again, if the heart rate less than 60, again, uh, we have to consider IV permanent epinephrine. Please remember the flush volume has increased. The change only I am highlighting here. I'm not explaining the whole algorithm here. I'm just highlighting the changes. And also the dosage range has been simplified to IV or embra uh, or is 0.2 ml per kg on uh, in the endotracheal as 1 ml per kg of 1 in 10,000 adrenaline. Okay. And here, see, previous NRP, if you see the algorithm. So this is the full thing I'm just showing you. This is also freely downloadable from the net. If you can get it in NRP 8, uh, it has already come into the net, actually. Uh, we have just, we tried downloading. So the for current thing, it is whether they told it will be uh, given on uh, June 2021. So I'm just checking. Until now, I have not seen. Hope it is almost, uh, it will be ready soon. So this here, the target oxygen saturation only was given in the previous NRP algorithm. So I was wondering that that remains unchanged, like one minute, 60 to 65, two minutes, 65 to 70, three minutes, 70 to 75, four minutes, 75 to 85, minutes, 80 to 85, and 10 minutes, 85 to 95. So only one thing I want to tell you, see, you please have uh, the weight. For many times what we have seen is when we get uh, initial saturation, 60, 65, the, uh, the pre-post don't get panicky because one minute we need only 60 to 65. 65% saturation. And please remember, it takes around 10 minutes for the uh, saturation to improve uh, up to 85 to 90. It may take. Okay, some babies uh, may get over, like, um, saturation will become faster, uh, but still. I remember that. And another thing, change which has happened in the neural algorithm here is they have tried including the SPO2. See, yeah, more than 35 weeks, we should use 21% algal oxygen. And less than 35 weeks gestation, you have to use 21 to 30% oxygen. That particular thing has also, is a change which has come into the new, new neonatal resuscitation algorithm. Uh, please note here, we need to change it to 100% oxygen the moment you are starting uh, just a cardiac compression. Okay, this they have written it here also. So this uh, algorithm has to be very clear. Uh, the steps has to be very clear. So I've not taken much time in explaining the algorithm. I've just highlighted the changes. Uh, any uh, clarification can uh, refer back to the previous video on neonatal, neonatal resuscitation made easy. So now uh, with this, uh, I hope uh, this session was useful for you. And if you are not a subscribed to my channel, kindly do subscribe and click the bell icon and support the initiative. Thank you so much for your patient listening.